From its very beginning, the GE90 was hailed as a symbol of raw power, propelling the Boeing 777 to become the most successful twin-engine wide body in history. Yet few realize that the 777 once relied on another giant, Pratt & Whitney's PW4000. Surprisingly, far from meeting expectations, this engine became tied to alarming failures that forced the FAA to impose urgent regulations and strict oversight. What truly shocked the industry, however, was not just the incidents themselves, but the unsettling way Boeing and Pratt & Whitney responded. So, why did the PW4000 trigger such shocking incidents, and how did the manufacturers react? Let's find out. On August 25th, Pratt & Whitney, PW, and Boeing jointly submitted a petition to the Federal Aviation Administration requesting an extension and exemption regarding the redesign of the PW4000-112 turbofan engine, which is used on Boeing 777 aircraft. Previously, the FAA had set a mandatory deadline. All 777s equipped with PW4000 engines must be upgraded with the approved design changes by March 4, 2028. This requirement does not apply to 777s powered by GE Aerospace's GE90 or Rolls-Royce's Trent engines. However, Boeing and Pratt & Whitney argued that the deadline was unrealistic. In May, Boeing requested an additional five years, pushing the compliance date to March 4, 2033, citing the complexity of the redesign and limited capacity at maintenance facilities. The moment the extension request was announced, a battle of opinions erupted among stakeholders. On one side stood the Airline Pilots Association, ALPA, representing tens of thousands of pilots. For them, the issue was nothing less than a race against time to ensure absolute safety. ALPA wasted no time voicing its opposition, arguing that a further five-year delay was simply unacceptable. This is a matter of life and safety, not an economic calculation, an ALPA representative declared, stressing that permanent fixes must be implemented as quickly as possible to eliminate potential risks. In contrast, United Airlines, the only U.S. carrier still operating 777s with PW4000 engines, sided with Boeing and Pratt & Whitney, insisting that the current deadline was unrealistic given the scale and complexity of the required modifications. For United, the story looked very different. The airline had invested billions of dollars in its fleet of 52 777s, and being forced to ground or upgrade them prematurely would mean massive financial losses, disrupting both operations and schedules. Caught between these opposing forces, the Federal Aviation Administration is in an unenviable position. Its decision was no longer just about technical certification, but about striking a delicate balance between colossal economic interests and the uncompromising priority of safety, a principle that every pilot holds above all else. The result is that FAA officials have acknowledged the difficulty of the request and indicated that a final decision may take longer than the standard 120-day review process. But just how complex is the update? The two companies are working closely together to deliver a comprehensive solution. Pratt & Whitney, a subsidiary of RTX, is responsible for updating the internal engine hardware to ensure safety, while Boeing is redesigning the inlet and engine casing so they can withstand fan blade out events and prevent debris from escaping. These changes build upon temporary measures approved by the FAA in 2022, which allowed previously grounded aircraft to return to service. According to Boeing, the redesign includes updates to the engine core mounting system to prevent flange separation, along with external hardware modifications to mitigate the severity of engine fires. Pratt & Whitney maintains that the new design will still uphold the highest level of safety, even as it seeks regulatory exemptions. But just how serious were the failures of the PW4000 that the FAA was forced to demand a complete overhaul? The answer lies in a string of chilling incidents tied to the PW4000-112 fan blades, the most infamous came on February 20, 2021, United Airlines Flight 328, a Boeing 777-200 departing Denver, had barely lifted off when the right engine's fan blade fractured. Debris from the engine rained down over suburban Denver, miraculously causing no injuries. Inside the cockpit, the pilots swiftly executed emergency procedures, shutting down the failed engine and turning the aircraft back toward the airport. Yet the fire did not extinguish right away, with smoke continuing to billow from the stricken engine. Their decision to carry out a safe landing ultimately saved all 231 passengers and 10 crew members on board. Although the landing was safe, but this incident shook the aviation world. The FAA quickly confirmed it as a fan blade out, FBO, a catastrophic failure where the fan blade breaks free of the engine. The subsequent investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, revealed a chilling truth. 
The cause was a fan blade fracture due to metal fatigue, a problem that had been silently growing for years. Yet the most frightening part wasn't the issues that caused it, but the fact that they had already been detected and still ignored. Data from a 2016 inspection had revealed low-level indications, but these were tragically dismissed because of were considered just sensor noise. The fan blade continued to fly for nearly 3,000 more cycles before it finally snapped, unleashing a chain of destruction. The violent force not only tore apart the engine's casing, but also severed crucial components, igniting leaking fuel and creating a fire that pilots could not extinguish. Even more troubling, this wasn't the first time, just the newest. In 2010, a PW4000 fan blade split in half. In 2018, United Flight 1175 from San Francisco to Honolulu nearly ended in catastrophe when a fan blade completely separated while flying over the Pacific Ocean. Each incident forced regulators in the US, UK, and Japan to ground fleets of PW4000 powered 777s. Yet repeatedly, anomalies from inspection data were dismissed and the blades were cleared for service. The National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, ultimately concluded the root cause was not just the metal fatigue, but also inadequate inspection protocols and a flawed inlet design that could not contain the destructive energy of a fan blade out event. The failure of the K-ring, designed to prevent hot gases from escaping, allowed the fire to spread uncontrollably, proving the design's dangerous limitations. As a result, the FAA was left with no choice but to demand a comprehensive overhaul. The agency required not only the immediate grounding of all 25 United 777s with these engines, but also a permanent fix. Pratt & Whitney responded by developing an advanced ultrasonic inspection method to detect tiny cracks and drastically reducing the inspection interval from 6,500 to just 275 cycles. This aggressive action was a direct consequence of the terrifying incidents, underscoring the high stakes involved and the critical need for a complete redesign to prevent future tragedies. These new measures drastically reduce the chance of missing hidden cracks, but the damage to PW4000's reputation was inevitable. Today, with more rigorous inspections and ultrasonic testing, the risk of undetected cracks is close to zero. Yet, a haunting thing remains. Why were the early warning signs ignored? But to truly understand why these failures shook the industry, we need to take a closer look at the engine itself, the Pratt & Whitney PW4000 112. Few engines in aviation history embodied raw power and ambition, like this Pratt & Whitney engine. With a massive 9.3-foot, 2.8-meter fan diameter and a thrust rating ranging from 74,000 to 98,000 pounds, it was once celebrated as one of the most powerful engines in the skies. Built with a bypass ratio of 6.41, it was engineered for efficiency and reliability, powering Boeing's workhorse wide bodies, the 777-200 version 200ER, and version 300. Stretching 16 feet in length and weighing over 15,500 pounds, the engine was certified for ETOPS 180 right from its introduction, meaning airlines could confidently fly it up to three hours away from the nearest diversion airport. Yet the PW4000 always had a rival, one that would ultimately overshadow it, GE's legendary GE90. Unlike the PW4000, the GE90 was designed exclusively for the 777 and pushed engineering limits to a new frontier. With an enormous fan spanning 123 to 128 inches, 3.1 to 3.25 meters, the GE90 could generate a staggering 81,000 to 115,000 pounds of thrust. Its most powerful variant, the GE90-115B, still holds the crown as the most powerful commercial jet engine ever built. Moreover, the secret lay in its higher bypass ratio, 8.41 to 901, which gave it superior fuel efficiency and smoother performance compared to the PW4000. But what does this difference really mean? A higher bypass ratio gives the GE90 a clear edge in several ways. First, it makes the engine more fuel efficient, allowing airlines to cut operating costs, a top priority in the industry. Second, it significantly reduces noise during takeoff and landing, providing passengers with a quieter, smoother experience while also lowering noise pollution around airports. And finally, it enables the GE90 to house an enormous fan, measuring up to 128 inches, 3.25 meters, in diameter, much larger than the PW4000s. This massive fan moves a vast amount of air at slower speeds, producing thrust far more efficiently. This was never just a contest of numbers. The GE90, developed by General Electric, represented a giant leap in technology, a true beast built to dominate the widebody market. 
Its unmatched power and unprecedented efficiency made it the exclusive engine for Boeing's long-range 777 variants, including the 200LR, 300ER, and Freighter. In doing so, this engine cemented its status as a symbol of engineering innovation, towering above all rivals of its era. Both engines remain marvels of modern engineering. The PW4000 carved out its place as a strong, efficient choice for standard 777 models, while the GE90 reigned supreme on the long-haul, high-capacity aircraft that reshaped global travel. But history was not kind to Pratt & Whitney. In the United States, United Airlines is the only carrier that chose the PW4000 for its 777 fleet. And to this day, it operates 52 of these aircraft. Yet after the high-profile failures, every single one of them flies under an intense spotlight. Inspections are stricter, oversight is constant, and the timeline for a permanent fix remains uncertain. The FAA's decision on Boeing and Pratt & Whitney's request for extensions will determine the future of these wide bodies. If approved, United may continue flying them well into the next decade while redesign work drags on. If the request is rejected, airlines flying PW4000 powered aircraft won't be able to keep operating under the existing setup beyond the deadline. They would have to wait for the upgraded engine to clear testing and regulatory approval. The FAA's final decision will shape the future of the 777 fleet powered by PW4000 engines. Will the agency prioritize speed to ensure safety or concede to the economic and technical challenges at hand? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget, subscribe if you want more deep dives into the battles shaping our world, because in aviation, as in politics, the skies are never as calm as they seem. Thanks and stay safe.